All right, good afternoon, guys. Um, thank you to Claire and Johannes for sort of just setting the scene for me and explaining pretty much all of what my first two slides are about. So I'm going to quickly gallop through those and just get onto some of the uh, results and sort of conclusions. Um, so we're talking about bull sharks. And essentially what this says is that stabilized terps can be used as a complementary tool to stomach content analysis. It is one way through which we may, may be able to look at um, the traffic ecology within a marine environment. Um, bull sharks are a subject of this investigation as they typically are top predators throughout their range. And predation by large shark species such as bull sharks play an important role shaping marine communities. Um, I'm just leaving some stuff out because it was already covered. So essentially, we use carbon and nitrogen stable isotopes, as was previously mentioned. Uh, just to recap, the nitrogen isotope gives us an idea of trophic level. The carbon, carbon isotope gives us an idea of dietary sources. And essentially, like was previously mentioned too, it gives us an idea of assimilated dietary items over time, as opposed to a snapshot nature which you may obtain from stomach content analysis. So more about uh, where the study took place. Um, study location was uh, in southern Mozambique. Um, it's recently sort of been declared a marine protected area which forms about 86 kilometers of coastline from the South African border up around it into Maputo Bay adjacent to Simangeliso. And specifically, the, the, we focused our sampling effort on one reef system which is called the Pinnacles and it's located about three and a half kilometers offshore forming a, a ridge about 1.2 kilometers long, coming up from about 50 meters to 30 meters, and essentially forms a congregation point for many top predatory teleost fish species, as well as an abundance of, of carcarina shark species, of which bull sharks are typically the most abundant and dominant, specifically during the summer months. So, uh, over the period of about 111 dives at the study sites, we essentially assessed the most abundant predatory teleost fish species and collected samples from those uh, species selectively. Um, these top predatory pelagic teleost species were then grouped into two main categories, one being the offshore components, so pelagic teleost predatory fish such as were typically wahoo, dorado, sailfish, etc. Ones that typically forage offshore. And then we grouped another group of those teleost fish species to coastal predators, so we get large abundances of uh, giant trevally, many other kingfish species, king mackerel, barracuda, those which forage at this offshore site but typically associated more with the coastal inshore foraging um, range. And then we also had um, coastal mesa predators as another group. Um, so of, up to now, we processed 18 sample sharks, and typically, well, they range typically between 1.6 total and 2.5 total length, we grouped those into two groups, one being the sub-adult components, those which are typically um, sexually immature, those into the adult components, which are typically sexually mature species. Just collecting data, uh, the initial component of the study was collecting tissue samples um, via remote biopsy um, as, as a method that we, we use to essentially minimize the, the stress for these, these animals and collect a larger range of samples without having to catch them. So we also use laser photogrammetry to measure the sharks while we sample them. These two points here, represented by X, are the distance between laser points and we can use that known distance to calculate the, the length of, the pre-quarter length of the shark and then Z here just represents the biopsy mark. So we would have measured the shark, biopsied the shark, and the scar remains for about six weeks, which also allows us to prevent resampling the same individual. A uh, bunch of boring stuff about stable isotope methodology. Essentially, we've been through some of it. Uh, main program was cyber in R, which we all enjoy. Um, just a brief summary of traffic position. Um, <clears throat> the scale is, is pretty condensed. Essentially, as expected, the adult sharks had a slightly higher traffic position than the sub-adult sharks. These results of this traffic position were slightly higher by about 0.2 than other 
um, studies looking at stable, I mean, stomach content analysis to calculate trophic position, um, but a fair representation of the trophic position. And the, this is the offshore predatory telios component. This is the coastal predatory telios component. Both with similar trophic positions, slightly less than the bull sharks, but again, with a trophic level of, of four, representing the fact that there are still top predators within that marine community. Um, all right, so you've seen one of these before, which is great. Um, just to run through it again quickly, nitrogen on the y-axis, carbon on the x-axis, giving us idea of trophic position, giving us idea of <coughs> dietary source. All right. Um, as previously mentioned, we use these um, ellipses, which, which correct for small sample size or difference between sample sizes. So we're then able to compare, essentially, the niche widths between our bull sharks, which are the black lines, and our two predatory fish communities. Uh, essentially what this suggests is that the coastal and pelagic uh, <coughs> telios predatory communities have a highly overlapping dietary range, which is backed up by our observations. Typically, um, species from the offshore and the inshore components don't really share, don't really have much of a partition when it comes to where they feed. Um, and have two overlapping niche spaces. Um, interestingly, the bull shark component had a significantly wider niche width than the, the fish component, uh, representing the fact here that they have a slightly higher trophic position than the uh, teleos fish component, which we saw previously. But more interestingly, they've got a much broader carbon signature. Essentially, as a sample population of bull sharks, this suggests that they are capable of sourcing their dietary items over a much broader range or geographical area, as opposed to the telios <coughs> component, which is more likely sourcing their dietary items over a very limited geographical area. Looking a similar setup with the adults versus the sub-adults. Uh, it's a small sample size for now, we're still busy with a few things, but essentially this agrees with what we know from the literature using stomach content analysis, is that the sub-adult population, they've got a, a larger range in the nitrogen levels, suggesting that sampled individuals within the sub-adult population are still reaching a nitrogen plateau. So in other words, you may still get sharks which are growing, being able to eat larger prey with a higher trophic level. Adult sharks, on the other hand, have a, a more stable trophic position, probably all feeding at a similarly, similarly high trophic position, but over a much broader carbon range. So this suggests that as sharks develop and mature, the, the main dietary shift goes from trophic to source based. So some of these outlying sharks here are probably sourcing most of their dietary items from an environment geographically very separate from the environment which we sampled at the study site. And this is backed up by literature or other shark species which typically as they grow larger are able to move more and, and further away from the study site. But we've still got a bit of work to do. Essentially, um, Although bull sharks and the teleos predators had a similarly high trophic position, um, bull sharks had a significantly wider niche width, suggesting that bull sharks have a greater impact through predation on their marine environment as opposed to the teleos components of the top predatory fish. Um, so this may be important when considering how top predators influence their respective marine communities. Large shark species such as the bull shark may be exceptionally important, not only shaping their respective com marine communities, but also linking processes between geographically distant marine communities, unlike top predatory teleos species, which seems to have a more, a more limited um, menu and, and basically influence on their community. Um, so what next? We still hope to link a lot of uh, the stable isotope work with uh, telemetry work to try and back up the fact 
or what we see with the stable isolates um, data are these large sharks moving greater distances. So um, we've been busy tagging sharks um, with acoustic tags internally and as well as uh, just establishing acoustic array at the border of South Africa and Mozambique as well as a few other receivers in the area. <coughs> and we've got 18 sharks tagged now. Hopefully in the next couple of years we'll get some data back and yeah, if we, as we've heard before from Enrico with the OTN, Hopefully you can all contribute to picking up each other's sharks and contributing to a greater understanding. Thanks.